Well, New York City's Mayor Eric Adams' office is handing out flyers to illegal aliens now. You know, explain to them they love sanctuary cities, they love illegal aliens. But could you go be a sanctuary city illegal alien somewhere else, please? According to the mayor's office, New York City will be issuing flyers to immigrants that enter the country illegally that outline reasons they should settle somewhere else. Hey, we love New York City. The Big Apple's great. Could you go somewhere else, please? The flyer cites the flood of illegals who have arrived in the city, the expensive cost of living, and the fact that the city cannot guarantee adequate shelter and services for new arrivals. According to the official website of the city of New York, the city has brought in over 90,000 asylum seekers since last spring, and an average of three to 500 people are still arriving every single day. You know, since Adams took office, the number of illegals being housed in New York City shelters has increased by more than 100%. Here with more on the story is TP USA correspondent Joe Bob. Joe Bob, good to have you here on a Friday. I mean, I thought we were loving, caring, giving individuals in these sanctuary cities. It's like, hey, we love you. Go somewhere else. Weird. You know, uh, sometimes I get in trouble for saying this, but I'd like to correct uh, myself at <laughs> least. I don't say illegal immigrants. I say criminal immigrants because it is a crime. Mm. Uh, and I think that adds a little bit more to the punch. Uh, but the whole idea that New York City is a quote unquote sanctuary city, just briefly, I wanna unpack what that means. That means that the city itself will not cooperate with the federal jurisdiction, the, the federal immigration people. So all that means is that they will not say, hey, this person who committed a crime in this city that is uh, in custody in this city, we're not going to tell the federal government whether or not that person is in our custody or we know anything about them. They're not gonna cooperate in any way, shape or form. Now. A couple quick numbers, which I think is fascinating. Eric Adams himself, the person who is kind of at the head of this whole New York City being a sanctuary city, estimated that it's going to be $4.3 billion in additional spend for the taxpayers of New York City in the years 2023 and 2024. So at some point, regardless of whether or not the idea of a sanctuary city makes them feel good, the taxpayers are going to be uh, on the hook for a huge bill. And at some point, it's just not going to be economically possible to continue having the policy that they have. Look, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going back. Martha's Vineyard has lots of cash. They got mm. a lot of empty rooms. Hey, I'm telling you, that was not a bad plan. But, you know, you look at people uh, when they take over elementary schools in the summer and say, hey, we're just going to house a bunch of illegals here. And I use the term illegal alien because it seems to ruffle the feathers on the left. And it's accurate as far as government text goes. So I like to use accurate words. In Chicago, Joe Bob, you've seen this. The parents there, frankly, are mad as hell because they're taking mm. over local schools and playgrounds and setting up these, you know, these temporary illegal shelters that are not temporary because they don't have any place to go. We let them in. Now they're here. And now they're stuck with these neighborhoods. I mean, honestly, that's a huge problem. Yeah, you know, and back in May, you'd mentioned that 90,000 uh, illegal immigrants have gone to New York City. Back in May, that number was 60,000, and the estimate was about 40,000 of those 60,000 were on the dole in some way, shape, or form, whether it's subsidized housing, food, or a bunch of the other benefits. I can only imagine that number has gone up, but if it stays consistent, about 2,000 thirds of all of these people coming in are now sucking out of the taxpayer uh, pocket, which is which is terrible. Now, here's something that I feel like we should be talking about more, and it's the conflict, the juxtaposition of ideas. The left on the, the lefty side of the aisle in this country so often goes after things that they deem as bad for you by taxing it. And it, they think that, well, <laughs> if you tax it, then people will do it less, which must mean that if you subsidize it, people will do it more. So if they believe that taxing things like soda and food that is quote unquote bad for you, you will get less of it, then they have to believe if you subsidize something, you will get more of it. The problem with it is that idea is in direct conflict with how they're handling in things in New York City. If you subsidize people coming into your city that are going to be on the dole for housing, food, uh, medical assistance, then you're going to get more of it. So in my mind, it doesn't seem possible that they can think the same thing but have two separate outcomes depending on where that, right. uh, that ideology is being placed. 
Now, I want to look at one more aspect of this whole flood, whether it's New York City or Chicago or the entire state of California. At some mm. point, Joe Bob, the people, those parents, and, and many of these neighborhoods, these are people of color, you know, the ones that the Democrats love the most, the people of color that they always want to make sure that they cater to. They're the ones getting, frankly, screwed because it's their elementary school that's being filled with the illegals. It's their playground and their park that's being filled with the illegals. This has to have a political impact come 2024. It has to because these people can't sit there and go, oh, I hate this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reward the Democrats with my vote again. I just don't believe it. I'll give you the last word. Yeah, well, I mean, I think what you're saying is shown in the polling. You see a lot of people from uh, that are categorized as minority communities moving to the right side of the aisle. I think Republican registration among the black community, the Hispanic community, uh, and especially the Asian community has gone through the roof. So I, I think what you're saying is just indicative of what's actually happening. If you get policy that is going to affect your neighborhood and your neck of the woods, you're going to adjust your vote accordingly. And, you know, hopefully, again, I don't want to see America have to fall into a pit in order to get back out of it. But at the same time, I, I maybe the light at the end of the tunnel is that so many people start recognizing that the policies don't work and quit continuing to vote with identity politics well, uh, going forward. Joe Bob, as my father used to say, pain is a very good teacher. It is. Now, I was a bit of a slow learner, but pain is a good teacher. And what I mean by that is if the people in Chicago and New York, they're feeling the pain and the actual American citizens are feeling the pain of, oh, you can't get into the hotel. Oh, the veterans have been put out so they can make more money off of illegals. That pain could make a difference at the ballot box. Joe Bob, thank you for being here. Have a great Friday. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right. Up after the break, another squad member, a new member, embarrasses themselves this time using a quote, thirst strike, a thirst strike. Oh, the agony, the humanity.